What's good people and welcome back today to another drill video. So today in this video I'm going to be going over how I mix my drill beats. Um, before I get started just want to quickly say don't take everything I say too literally in this video. I'm just kind of showing you how I mix. Just hopefully you'll learn something from this video but yeah let's get into it. Okay right so I've got this drill beat I just made earlier. It's completely unmixed. It's not the most amazing drill beat, but it's good enough for you to go to get an example of how I mix. So yeah, let's take a listen. Right, so you get the point. So the first thing I do before mixing my beats is route all my drums to the mixer. If you don't know how to do this too quickly, all you have to do is open the channel rack, kind of highlight these little rectangles, open your mixer, right click one of the empty inserts and do channel routing and route selected channels from this track and that will lay out all your sounds. As well, we're just gonna put on the melodies as well. So do the same thing there. And I like to move my melodies to the front, so you can do this as well by holding Alt and then use the arrow keys, and then you can kind of position your um, channels. Okay, so another thing as well, this is something I didn't know for ages, literally I discovered this the other day. Um, sometimes I'd delete sounds I've got on my mixer, but the kind of properties and everything would still be on the mixer, and I just used to move it all the way to the end so you can't see it. But that will use up CPU and stuff if you've got effects on there. So literally to set that to default, all you have to do is go file and then default. That simple. Okay, so now we've got all our drums routed to the mixer. We're gonna go to the spot where there's the most drum heavy in our track, which is here, obviously. So we've got all the sounds playing here. Then when I mix first, I like to start with the kick in the 808 and then work through. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the mixer and we're gonna solo off the kick. So to solo off, just right click this little on button and then it will just play the kick. Obviously we've got this bit looped so we don't have to keep restarting. But as you can see, the kick is clearly clipping over through there. Tell you what, let me make this bigger. So yeah, as you can see, the kick is clearly clipping uh, over free. So to easily fix this, just put a soft clipper on, fruity soft clipper, and there you go. It's not gonna push it over one, over zero. Now let's get with the 808. Now to me, the 808 is way too loud. You can barely hear the kick. So it does take practice, but what I like to do is drag it down quite low until it sounds really quiet and then bring it up. And then as soon as you start feel, feeling like it's a bit too loud, just drag it down and you'll kind of find that sweet spot. Every drum has a different kind of sweet spot, I guess. I can also hear a bit of muddiness on the kick. I don't know if that's coming through, but Sounds a little bit muddy, so we're going to go into EQ and just going to take a look at it and see if we can clear anything up here. So as you can see, there's a lot of there's a fair bit of high end that comes through here, which is probably causing a lot of the muddiness, conflicting with the 808. So we're just going to take that out, and then when we put the 808 back in. There, it's not as muddy now. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is just the snare. You can add reverb to your snare, but this one's already got a bit on it. But as if I was to do it, I'd show you how I'd do it. So we open up reverb. We're gonna put the dry up all the way, sorry, the dry all the way down, the wet all the way up, which essentially means 
there is none of the original sound coming through. That's what the dry. So when the dry's all the way down and the wet's all the way up, it's only playing the effect of the reverb. So we're gonna make the room size smaller. Sounds about right there. Put a delay on a bit. Not too much delay. Bring the decay down a lot. So it'll bring the high cut down actually. And then just mix it in with this on the mixer. I'll leave it in, it sounds quite good. And then we'll just level a bit level it a bit more. We're going to chuck a soft clipper on this as well because as you can see it's clipping. And let's work with the hat now. So that's sounding really loud. the 808 down again you'll notice as you start adding as you start mixing more drum sounds other drum sounds you've done previously kind of start to uh, become a bit more self-explanatory whether they need moving up or down in volume all right so the hats aren't sounding too bad but we can definitely improve them so we're going to go into the pattern and as you can see i've already done the velocity uh, of some of my rolls. If you haven't watched my video on how to do hi-hat rolls for drill beats, go and watch that. You'll um, see that on my channel. But something I didn't talk about in that video, or not enough, was panning. Um, so panning is really important um, in making sure your hats kind of have their own space in the mix. So what I like to do is, on these, as these rolls come every other bar, we're gonna put some pan into the right, and then these ones pan into the left, just to give it a bit of effect. And then that way they're, it's a bit more fluid, jumping around a bit more the mix. And then with these ones, I'm going to do my secret sauce and give it one of these. It doesn't really need to be perfect, but now if you can hear that properly, you'll see the hats are kind of, they're not so linear and static. They're very moving, they're fluid and moving around. And I think I like that in my mixes anyway. So let's carry on with the drums. That needs a lot of turning down. And we can also chuck a delay on this, I think that'd sound nice. Let's do it by eight. Yeah, I like that. Just bring it down a bit more. Then our other snare. That is very loud. We're gonna chuck the delay on that as well. So easy way to just copy it over is to save preset as and just drag it over. And we're gonna change the delay time on that one because it sounds a bit weird. Let's try six. Yeah, we like that. Bring that down a bit more, it's still quite loud. And we'll bring the cut down a bit more so it's not as in your ear when the delay comes back through. Yeah, sounds nice. Last little percussion sound. Oh, that's very loud. Jeez. And we're going to pan that to the right a bit just to give a bit of variation. 
bring that down in volume a bit. It's just this sounds a little bit too loud still. And this can be lowered again. Now to me, that's all fitting in really nicely. Um, and obviously we've still got to do our melody. So this is our main melody. Let's... And we're going to solo it off. And as I haven't applied any EQ into it, we're just going to do a little bit of EQ in so all the other drums kind of nicely fit in with this melody. So we'll open up parametric EQ. And let's have a listen. You can see there's a bit of low end here, not too much, but all of that low end will be clashing with your 808s and your kick. So if you take that out, you can also do a cut on the highs as well. To give it a bit more of that drill vibe and effects again these are optional but a nice plugin I like to use this kind of works for any genre is isotope vinyl it's a free plugin but I like to add warp onto my melodies it's the tiniest difference but it just kind of makes it sound a bit more organic um, I quite like it let's listen to the counter now now you can see these don't really fit together that well. So again, we're gonna chuck an EQ on. We're gonna do the exact same with the lows. But this time we're gonna go in a bit more till it sounds like it's fitting a bit more. So we're about there. So obviously this is the counter melody, I'm just wanting it to sit in the background and sound quite subtle. So without it, it sounds like this. And then with, it adds like a little bit more of another layer. But you can still hear there's something clashing there and I believe it will be this frequency. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a long kind of point here. Um, and I'm listening out for any whistling or horrible sounding frequencies. You just exaggerate the point here so you can get a good like sound of where it sounds the worst. And there's a horrible ring there so we're going to find it and we're just going to do not too much of a cut. So without And we're going to cut some of this out. Let's pull some of that out as well. And then this is another little tip that I like to do with my counter melodies. I go over here and add a fruity stereo shaper. Uh, so I don't really know what it does to be honest I just know it kind of messes with the left and right it messes with the stereo basically but I like to put it on this preset delay and it kind of just makes counter melody sit back a bit more so without very subtle difference but essentially that's how I mix my beats let's take a listen to the full thing and we will see how it sounds now. The hats can go down the tiniest bit actually. I'm so particular with my mixing.
That sounds great to me. Right, so that is the end of this video guys. I do hope you learned something from this. Remember, don't take this too literally. I'm just kind of sharing my tips with you. Take something from it, hopefully you learn something. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure you let me know down in the description. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure you go and let me know down in the comments. Tell me what I did good, tell me what I did bad. Tell me what you wanna see next. Like, just speak to me, cause I'll reply to every comment. But yeah, that's basically it. I hope you learned something and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.